All right, everybody. Well, it is exciting to be here. I'll have to admit I would have rather seen you in person, but we'll have to wait for uh, next year, I guess, for that. But I hope everybody's staying uh, safe and healthy. So my name is Dan Wallin, and last year at NGConf, I talked about something called observable services and specifically talked about different types of RxJS subjects that are available. So we talked about things like subject and behavior subject and async subject and replay subject. And I'm not going to go rehash that. You can go to YouTube for that if you want to watch. We're going to talk about taking it up to the next level, though, and a project called Observable Store. And this is a state management solution that's very simple to get going with, but very powerful, too, but not a lot of code. So I'll walk you through it, and that's what we'll do over the next 25 minutes or so here. All right, so there's a quote out there that I really like uh, by Al McGuire, and uh, you can see it here. It says, keep it simple. When you get too complex, you forget the obvious. And I think it's a great quote. Uh, I like to take it up a notch for anyone that does maintenance. Keep it simple because someone has to maintain this crap. And, you know, it's a true story. If anybody out there does production support, you know all about this. It's great to have solutions that work, but it's even better to have solutions that aren't super complex that we can maintain. So we're going to talk about how Observable Store can help you out with that. All right, so we're all accustomed to services in Angular, and we know they work great for sharing data. And we could even store data, of course, in the service and exchange that with other areas of the app using things like subjects. Again, that was the topic last time. But as a service starts to proliferate throughout your application, it ends up looking like this. And at this point, I'd argue that's not that big of a deal, pretty easy to follow. But as soon as services start getting data from multiple locations and components get data from multiple locations, this is generally when you know you have a state management problem, is you're confused. <laughs> have you ever been sitting there going, I have no idea what is going on right now? And you're setting breakpoints all over and you're just trying to figure out what is the flow of the actual data. Well, one way to resolve this is to kind of have one service that becomes your store and then have all services interact with that to actually store the data, something like this. Now, there's a lot of solutions out there, obviously, that do this, um, and they're all very good. This is not a talk about which one's better and which one's worse. This is a different alternative, and I'll explain more about the project and kind of how it came about here in just a moment. So if we're going to do that, though, if we're going to have a store that multiple services and other parts of the app can interact with, we definitely need a single source of truth. We need immutable state. That's going to be important because otherwise some of our change uh, management doesn't fire, like ng on changes, unless the reference changes. We need notification because if you change my store over here, but I have a component over here who never interacted with the store but wants to know when it changes, we need to know about that, of course. From a debugging standpoint, it'd be really nice to be able to track change history. Now, I'll show you a little bit about this at the end, but you can either use Observable Store, as you'll see, to actually have everything just in the console if you want to just watch the flow, or you can even use the Redux dev tools if you want it. And then finally, wouldn't it be nice if it was simple to implement and maintain? It's not really hard. And bonus, what if it even worked with anything? Not just Angular, but even some of those other ones, React and Vue and Svelte and whatever you want to do. So Observable Store came out of a prototype. Uh, a couple years ago, I was working with a, a larger company. And in working with that company, they wanted the equivalent of an observable service. So in other words, something that could uh, notify other parts of the app that something changed. But they also needed store functionality with it. And kind of the story behind this is they had gone with another solution, but they had had a bunch of new hires and they were just having a little bit of problem with productivity because not everybody knew what was going on. So myself and another person there, we started to put together a prototype and that eventually grew to what is now this library called Observable Store. So this is kind of my definition of it. It provides a simple way to manage state in front end application while achieving many of the key goals of the more complex solutions out there. And again, that's not to say any of them out there are bad or worse or whatever, not at all. I'm a big believer in right tool for the right job. And so there may be some apps out there that don't even need state management. I'm going to argue there's several probably that don't. And then you have the apps where you know you need state management. 
because you have state flowing all over the place in your app. So the way this works is really simple. Uh, when we initially kind of worked on this and prototyped it, and, and by the way, a lot of the concepts that are now in Observable Store came from people like yourself, uh, it came from pull requests and ideas I'd hear about on GitHub. And so uh, I, I definitely won't take all the credit for some of the different things it does. The way it works, though, is a component. We're used to that calling into a service. But let's say that service maybe retrieves data from the server, maybe with HTTP client or something like that. And then we need to store that in a store, maybe just for cache, caching purposes, possibly. So what we can do is extend customer service so that it is able to interact with this store. And you're going to see in a moment, we can get state, set state. We can do state slice selectors and all kinds of fun stuff like that. And then likewise, we might have another component that has an order service or an invoice, and they need to also interact with the store. Now, who knows? Maybe they just read the state. Not every service, of course, is going to be updating the state. But the bottom line is we need state to be able to flow through the app. We need that single source of truth, immutability, track what's going on so that we're not lost, and make it really easy to work with. That's kind of the, the overall goals here. So how do you get started with this? Well, you would install it. This will be the easiest step. And you can simply npm install, uh, code with Dan, observable store. Sadly, observable store, the package was taken. So I had to create my own kind of sub here. Uh, but it works well. Now, once you've installed it, it's tiny, by the way. Uh, I'd have to double check. Last I looked, I think it's less than 250 lines of code. Most of the functionality is coming from RxJS. So it's really wrapping a lot of that and just exposing a simple to use API. So the next thing you're gonna do is, if you're using TypeScript, and this is optional, because you can use this with React or Vue or anything as mentioned, but if you're using TypeScript, we have support for things like interfaces. So we can define a store state. In other words, what's gonna go in our store? Now, in this case, I have a really simple example. You'll notice I have customers, a customer, and orders. All right, now it could be really small like this, it could be really big, it's totally up to you, and you could have you know, sub-properties in these properties, of course. Now once we've done that, now we need to hook Observable Store up to our Angular services. And that's an extremely simple step. All we have to do is derive from Observable Store. So here be an example. Notice we have a customer service that extends Observable Store of store state right here. Now that alone makes your service capable of interacting with the store. Now, if you did this on, let's say 10 services, you still have one store, all right? It creates a singleton behind the scenes and all of them can then share the same data and interact with that store. Now, because we're extending in this case, you'll of course have to call super. And there's some settings that you can do down here we can track state history and we can log state changes and there's even more. You can go to the GitHub repo. I'll give you a link at the end if you want some of the other properties that you can use. Now that's all it takes to get it registered because observable store is not specific to Angular. We don't have to go in and register modules or anything like that because again, it can be used anywhere where there's JavaScript or uh, TypeScript actually. Okay, so let's say that we've done this now. Now what? Well, now the service may use HTTP client that you see here in the constructor, and it may need to go call out and get data and maybe cache the data or just pull data from the store. Who knows? Maybe there's lookup data, for example, that we want to cache. So then we need to get in set state to the store. Now, this is very simple to do. Because we extended observable store, we can call into a very simple API. There's a set state and there's a get state. Now on the set state, in this case, we're fetching some customers and I'm gonna assume I wanna cache them. So you'll notice the first parameter there is customers and that will become the property name, of course. And then you'll notice the second one is, I made an enumeration, but you can pass a string if you wanted. Um, this is the action. I need to track the actions because if I go into the history, I need to know exactly what happened at what stage. And so the action that you put here, that would take care of that. Now, I'm using what's called a string enum. So this enumeration just saves me typing magic strings because I don't like strings a whole lot. But ultimately, behind the scenes, it's rendering a string. Just saves me from typing that. 
All right, so now customers will be added to the store. That's all you'd have to do. Very, very simple. And it'll do it in a cloning kind of immutable way. Now from there, if you want to get state, so let's say we call this get all function. And if we already have customers in the store, I'd like to use those. I don't want to go back to the server in this case. Well, we can call get state within that service. And because get state is part of observable store, we'll have access to that. And now if we have some state, which you'll see right here, and we have customers, we can go ahead and just return those. You know, in this case, I'm wrapping it with of to make it an observable, of course. And then if we don't, we'll call the fetch customers that you just saw uh, previously. So very, very simple. Now, there's a lot more you can do with the get and set state. I'll have to admit in 25 minutes, I can't do that part justice. But that's how easy it would be to get data in and out of the store, at least to get started, uh, the beginner kind of way. Now, what if you have a component or a service or some other aspect of your application that needs to be able to know about when that store changes? What would you do there? Well, I mentioned earlier that last time I talked, it was called Mastering the Subject, and we talked about all these subjects like behavior subject. Well, Observable Store uses a behavior subject behind the scenes, and what it will do is when somebody subscribes to a behavior subject, you'll get the data that comes down. Now, what if somebody subscribes later, like component B down here? Well, with a behavior subject, they'll get the last piece of data, and that will now flow down as well as any future data. So really nice. And that's really what's going on with uh, the observable store. So what we can do then is observable store exposes a state change observable. We can then subscribe to that. Now, in this case, I'm assuming I'm going to use an async pipe. You'll notice this, this dot customers here. And I put the dollar there to kind of signify a, more of a streaming operation. But I call customer service, which extends observable store, state change, and then I'm going to pipe the data that came in and only grab the customers. Now, this is the most primitive way to do that. There's several other ways as well. You can do a state slice selector, it's called, and some other things as well. But this is the kind of easy way to do that. And then let's assume we would bind our customers that you see up top there to, uh, who knows, maybe a NG4, and we're going to use the async pipe to do that. All right, so that's kind of a quick overview. Now, let me uh, jump over to uh, sample lab here. And this is part of the observable store sample. So you're welcome to go to that project. Uh, you'll see a samples folder, and then you can uh, take a look at this. So you'll notice here uh, that we now have a simple service that extends observable store. And I'm not sure how big that is on your screen, so I'm gonna go even bigger. Um, but here we go. So here's my store state. That's just an interface. And then if I scroll on down in super, I can pass in things like state slice, slice selectors, say that 10 times. I can pass in settings for the store and you can even register settings uh, globally for the app as well. Now you'll notice in this get user settings, I'm going to demo this in just a moment. I am going into set state. And I'm going to set a property called user settings. So let's imagine that the user can interact with the user settings, maybe change like their preferred name, uh, their email, their theme. And until it goes back to the server, you want to store that. And maybe those uh, changes are used throughout the app. Maybe up on the toolbar, for example, you want to show preferred name, or maybe the theme is for the whole app, of course, if they change it. Now, in this case, you'll notice I'm calling add user settings when I set the state. All right, and I'll show you where this is used in just a moment. Now, if we go to update the settings, I can also call set state. In this case, I have a different action. And then we can come on down, and anytime the state changes, I can be notified about that. Now, I'm making a little wrapper API around that to make it even easier for components to subscribe. And I'll kind of get to that in just a moment. So if we go into the application itself, all right, you'll, um, you'll notice it's a pretty simple app, has customers and orders. But if I go into settings here, these settings are now in the store. I just retrieved those. Um, Jimbo apparently is the preferred name here. Let's say it needs to be Jimbo2. And I did a kind of blur event here when it updates the server and the store. So as soon as I blur, you'll notice Jimbo2 as expected updates here. And then as I change the theme, I need to notify the root component that that changed. 
So it's going to subscribe to the state change of the service. And now when I go to dark, and I know you're going, wow, Dan, that is the most phenomenal dark theme I've ever seen. I know I put a lot of work into this. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, you'll see that uh, that's able to change. And that's all being done by updating the store right then. Then the state change fires. And then we can notify. So again, it's almost like an observable service, but which all, with a whole bunch more bells and whistles going on there. So to wrap up, let me go to the component now uh, for this. So the one that's actually receiving some of these changes is the app component because it uh, actually changes and sets some theme stuff. So you'll notice I'm injecting the user setting service and a customer service. But in this case, what I'm doing is anytime the user settings is called or the user uh, settings changed fires, all right, these are both observables, that's going to update my user settings. And then in there, I can use that to do things like update the theme. Now, of course, this is a pretty simple demo. I can move that somewhere else. But the whole point of this is now I have a way to easily know when things change. If you go in and delete a customer, there's a little uh, red bubble up in the bar you saw. And that will show the number of items, the number of customers. Well, we can influence that right here. And notice I can grab the customer's length and subscribe. And again, this is just one of several ways you can know when the store changes. There's also some selector type things you can do. So to wrap up, that is the fundamentals of how you get started with Observable Store. Um, to kind of review the overall goals here, maybe. Come on, PowerPoint. There we go. All right. So the overall goals are not that fast. Yeah, it's fast. Uh, single source of truth, immutable state, super important. Again, there's a lot going on behind the scenes with Observable Store to ensure that the state is not being mutated uh, because that can mess up all kinds of things. We have notifications and we have a history as well. Now, the actually, I just realized I want to show one more quick thing there. Um, on the uh, history. So let's see if I can uh, go back. I don't know where I put that tab, so we'll, we'll go in this way. All right, so when I go in, another nice uh, new feature that's just recently been added, let's say I switch to Dart, and then I go back and, I don't know, I go to edit, maybe change a customer, something like this. Well, we can come into the Redux Dev Tools, and we also get support for replaying all those actions or as of right with this demo, it's actually going into the console and also writing out everything that's going on. So even with the really simplistic uh, kind of API you can use, you can multiple ways see every little thing that's going on as you'll see down here in the uh, DevTools console. Pretty cool. All right, now I wanna emphasize, is this the way, you know, like I have spoken if you're a Mandalorian fan, uh, no, <laughs> it's not the way. There is no the way. The way is what's ever best for your team. So if you're looking for something, I would highly encourage you to evaluate this and the other solutions out there because uh, everybody has different needs. This has worked out extremely well for us and a lot of the companies we work with are using it as well, but it doesn't mean it's right for you. You need to build your own prototype, go through the samples and try it out. So with that, thank you so much. Have a great rest of the conference. Stay safe and healthy and uh, keep the positive attitude. Appreciate it.